Okay, so what's going on here is I'm going to install this um, SAS or secondary air injection system valve bypass onto my car. And I believe I start out with this wire harness right here. And then I'm going to have to put a couple plates. It's really hard to see. Let's see if I can get deep down in here. I don't know if I'm able to get that. Right there, it's behind the block. That's a that's in a something that's hooked up to the exhaust that actually warms up the catalytic converter. There's one on that side right there. It opens up that heats up the catalytic converter when you start the car, just so the catalytic converter can get really hot right away. So we don't allow any emissions, not even a tiny fraction, a bit of emissions to kill our environment and to cause global warming and all that good stuff. But the fix, what's happening is one of my valves is sticking and the fix for it's like three grand, 1800 to three grand. I haven't taken it to the dealer because I'm not going to waste my money because it costs a hundred dollars just for them to take a look at it. So I bought and I bought on eBay, I should say, not boughting. I bought <laughs> um, the solution this secondary air system bypass module with plates that I'm going to install and that's why I'm making this movie so to maybe help you out because there's no movies out there when I looked to see if there's any install movies so one of the errors I'm getting is the P1441 and it's saying that one of the air injection system switching valves number two is stuck open I get a couple of those errors um, I was getting another error, it was like, um, I think it was a P2441, uh, but that's not coming on anymore since I cleared the codes, but this keeps coming on when I first start the engine when it's cold, and so um, this fix will work with, with this problem. So the first step it says in the instructions is to locate the air temperature mass air flow sensor, usually locate at the left of the engine compartment on the air box. So here's the air box. If you're looking straight at the engine, there it is right there. And I believe this is the wire harness right here that I need to tap into. So I'm probably just going to unplug that and pull this off and this is where I'm going to do my work. Then I'm going to mount the sensor probably right back here. I'll clean it off really good and mount it right there. So, and I'll try to keep it way back there so it doesn't look like I'm trying to hide anything. And the reason why I kind of want to hide it, though, is because I believe um, that if you get an inspector for smog, if they look, if they can tell there's something's been modified, then they will give you, or they won't pass your, your smog. This should help, this should actually... Um, pass smog with no problem with the sensor install because there will be no check lights on and by the time I get to getting this checked by uh, uh, the smog checked here in California the car should be already warmed up and I should not be having any kind of problems with the catalytic converter and so forth. Besides once again this is just a valve to shut off the exhaust to the catalytic converter uh, or, I'm sorry, it, it shuts it off once the catalytic converter gets hot enough. So that's all it's doing, is just getting it hot sooner. And so, um, you know, it's not going to cause any performance problems. It will stop the performance problems you have when all the codes come on, because then it just goes into uh, drag mode or whatever they call it. It just, uh, you know, won't take off or anything. I went ahead and went out and bought a quarter inch deep socket 10 millimeter for those rear uh, where those plates are going to go on the back where the exhaust is because it's not easy to un to to loosen those things up and this worked really well with this little tiny uh, ratchet and this 10 millimeter uh, deep socket um, worked good but I had to go out and buy it so I would try to get this before you go out and uh, before you start trying this installing this Okay, so I got, here's my wiring harness, I got all the wires, all the tape stripped off it, here's the actual wire cover here that I'll put back on. I went ahead and left this plug so I can plug it back right there, attach it back there, and I'm going to go ahead and plug in all the wires on here. 
So here's how the unit came. Came in a, a priority mailbox because I went ahead and did priority mail. Cost me 30 bucks. I bought this on eBay. And here's the plates. They're all covered up right now, but you can kind of see them. There they are. And here's the actual unit here. I'm going to go ahead and mount that. I cleaned this area off right there with some acetone. And here is so the wire. This goes to the starting uh, relay when the car comes on. So we'll put that in too later on. I want to make this look as factory as possible. So what I did is I went ahead on the unit. See, I mounted the unit there. I taped the wires with black electrical tape and when I run it in the wiring hunter so that way you can't really tell that it's it looks different that's the whole idea is not so it's not noticeable this will get all dusty and everything like the rest of the engine and hopefully nobody ever noticed that I installed this how it's looking so far I just kinda ran it through there I went ahead and mounted that just so you could see what it's gonna turn out like and here's my wires here that I'm gonna connect to this wire wires here Done is I've handwritten in because I have a Sequoia 2005 Sequoia. I've handwritten in the colors that are going to be going from the unit that I bought and connecting to these wires. This goes to the engine. This is the wiring harness. The wires going back to the engine, and these are the wires going to that plug that I unplugged on the sensor on the air cleaner. So it, it probably would help to write in all the colors so that way you don't get confused. These colors right here. I'm just going to ignore those. So I got most of the wiring on here and what I'm doing is I'm doing what they say is just I'm slitting the wire like I'm uh, using some wire strippers and stripping it on both sides and then I'm cutting in the cutting in the middle of this and peeling this back. Piece right here here's the here's the piece that I took off right there and so the wire is intact and now I'm just going to wrap this wire around there and solder it on. I've been using a soldering iron like they recommend. There's the red wire after I soldered it right there. There's the solder. It's all I wrapped it around and then I just soldered it. And now I'll just use electrical tape and tape it up. Time to hook up the starter wire that you need to have hooked up to the device. And so I'm just gonna pop this out. This is uh, relays and fuse fuses and I'm going to flip this over and here's the diagram it's just like the one in the sheet the instructions he gives you and this is the this is the relay that I got to pull out and figure out what wire what plug or prong to hook up the purple wire to so I'll pull that out and then we'll see what wire we need to use. So what I did is here's the relay here and I believe this is the the prong because it's the same it's the same one same layout as the one in the instruction so I'm gonna just try it what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do opposite of what they said I'm just gonna go ahead and connect the wire not connected to the unit but just the wire is really long I'll just check it I'll turn the ignition on and check it with the test light to make sure that it's the correct wire and what I did is I drilled a hole my cordless drill instead of it, it they suggest that you run it through the bottom with all the other wires but I just went ahead and drilled a hole on the side um, like that. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah, it's pretty good right there. And um, that's how I got the wire in there. So we'll check out the wire in a minute here. Here's the, here's the test light here. I got a test light right there. That's hooked up to ground under my dash. And this is the wire coming from that fuse relay box. And so here, I'm going to set this down on my lap right here in my leg and we'll see if this is the right wire that they're wanting us to use it should go now right, that's the ignition is on right there but I haven't hit the start there it goes see that it lit up when I uh, started it up and I believe that's what we want okay it's getting kind of dark now and I still haven't put the plates on I might have to do it tomorrow and I might come back to finish this video but I've ran the purple wire it's kind of hard to see but there it is I'm gonna get some conduit some of the plastic uh, wire covering so it looks like an original run I'll get that at the auto parts store and I've ran it through my wiring harness here see that I ran it through here and then I'm gonna connect the two purple wires together here 
and um, that'll be done for the installation um, of the wiring and then I just got to put the backing plates on and I don't know if I'll have enough light to do that but I might just use a, 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 a garage light or something like that to do that the two plates and I'm gonna go ahead and install those on the back of the exhaust um, in the I showed you where the go that where the screws are <clears throat> so I'm gonna unscrew them not all the way and uh, pry them open, put these in, slide them in, and then tighten them back up. Okay, so I just slipped in right there. You can barely see it. I just slipped in one, and it wasn't that hard at all. This is the hard side to get to, too. Um, one of the metal plates. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to tighten it up and do the other side. As you can see, it's dark outside now. So... Okay, the driver's side went on easier than the passenger side. I'm trying to get in here to see, see if you can see. It's, uh, I'm kind of missing it here, but anyway, it's back in there. See, there's the, this is the tube right here. This right here. And that's one of the, the bolts right there. Let's see if I can get it a little bit closer here. There we go, see here, right here. So I put the backing plate, it's right here. That's one of the screws right there, and the other one. And I'll tell you, that quarter inch ratchet was the trick for the, the back side on both of them. Uh, the passenger side, like I said, it's a little bit harder to put in than this side, but once you get them loose, once you get the, the bolts loose, you just pry it with a screwdriver a little bit and slip it right in, it goes right in. It was pretty easy. And um, that's it. See the wire is still right there, the purple wire. Uh, let me just show you right there. So here's my purple wire. It's going along here. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to uh, get some conduit or something like that and fix that. So let's give it a start. So now I'm inside the car. I'm gonna give it a start in a second. First, I'm gonna plug in my key, my uh, code reader. And underneath the dash right here, it's kind of hard to see here, but I'll just stick it right there. As you can hear, it just popped on. And see, there it is right there. Goes up right in there. And here's my code reader. And I'll go ahead and stick the key in, and I'll clear the codes. Probably, there, I don't think there's any codes because I cleared them earlier. What I've been doing is um, I've been driving with this thing. In the morning, I have to use this thing. And hold on. In the morning, I've been using this uh, my code reader to clear the codes out. So, okay, so we're establishing our link here. Get this here so I can see this better. Let me verify that I plugged it all the way in. Okay, see it's saying, okay, there we go. Okay, now we have a P113, so let's just clear this. This might be what they're saying that might come up. So I'm going to go ahead and it says 104. Let's check out what the other ones are. So let's go ahead and clear them all. Okay, so it says the race was successful, so let's shut it off. Turn it back on again, the ignition. Let's see what it says. Let's see if there's anything. I don't see anything. Let's see. Turn it on again. I'm going to shut my reader off. Okay, let's try it one more time. And... Okay, it says nothing's wrong with it at this point. So let's give it a start. I'm gonna unplug my reader right now. And start it up, see what happens. Okay, as you can hear, the car's running. And... Now the maintenance required right there on the dash is on because I need to change the oil. 
so I don't see any codes right now. Got the door open because I have the door open right now. And it seems everything is running fine right now, so we'll see. I'll let you know if uh, there's any problems after this. Good morning, and I'm going to see how this thing starts from being cold. Let's see if my device works, and it looks like it's working pretty good. So far, so good. Let it run for a while. And yeah, so what I would recommend is just give yourself a couple hours to install it. I like to take my time when I do stuff like that, so that way I do it right. And I follow the directions, and yeah. The biggest thing that I was confused with the directions is the light that you want to hook up the purple wire to. You want to have that a... It's going to be a, a positive, so you can use a test light on, um, you know, connect it any to any ground. And it's got to be a positive that just comes on for a second or when you crank the starter and then when you let up cranking the starter and the car starts, it shuts off again. So that's that's the purple wire. That's that one thing I didn't really understand. I emailed the um, Paul, the guy that I got this the unit from, and um, that's what uh, he had mentioned or he said when I emailed him. But, um, yeah, I didn't know that before I got started. So anyway. What the final install looks like. So here's my device. Here's the wires going into the wire. You can't really notice that I've changed anything. I have the purple wire going into some black conduit now. It goes along here. Here it is right there. It goes along here, it goes up to here. You can see that. And it goes up through here. Put that down a little bit. Goes along here. Straighten it up a little bit. Tighten it up. Two down here. Put some tie wraps, black tie wraps, so it's not too noticeable. And then down here. Let's see if I can get this shot. It's kind of sunny right now. Um, there it is right there. So it comes through here, here it is right here, and then I just taped it a little bit right there. And it goes right into the box. So that's the final install, and hopefully it's as non-noticeable as you can possibly make it. And so if I ever have to get it smog, well I will have to get it smog. Nobody will notice it and I will not, it won't trip up anything. The car's running great. Um, just had it, tried it a couple days, and but it's working really well. So mission accomplished. Uh, what I suggest is take your time installing it. it. Takes a couple hours. I would run this wire that I just did while you're watching TV or something first. The purple wire through your conduit. So buy it. I would recommend getting that at Home Depot because it was only 250 for 10 feet. And um, most definitely, a couple things you need to get for sure is the deep socket. I would go with a quarter inch ratchet if you have it because um, it makes it easier to get inside these little areas down here to get that to get that right there and the uh, one of the opposite is the hard one the outside one this one I'm pointing at right now this one you're gonna use a 10 millimeter wrench small one and then the other one you're gonna use your deep socket and then um, so yeah so have a deep socket buy the conduit put the purple wire in it before you actually start your job and yeah, all done.